Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with a really really interesting base. We have 1 plus square root of 3i all over 2 to the power z equals 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. What else could we solve for, right? But we're going to be solving for all z values, all possible solutions. How many solutions are there? Do you think there's obviously a trivial solution which we're not really after but i'm also going to mention that hopefully if i don't forget at the end when we look at the solutions okay and we're also going to be checking our answers against wolfram alpha which is something that i almost always try to do because sometimes wolfram alpha cannot solve a problem which you will see actually tomorrow and oops i spoiled it but anyways uh, sometimes it can't and when we can solve it and wolfram alpha cannot solve it I'm happy because we're better than LLMs or whatever they are called. I called it AI. Some people say Wolfram Alpha is an AI, whatever. I mean, there's all this AI hype that people think that AI can do everything, but that's not the truth. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. They kind of teach you the basics. And if you like algebra number theory and trigonometry problems, a little bit of geometry here and there, Check out Cyber Math, my other channel, Cyber with an S. I have to say it because Cyber is usually spelled with a C, right? No, it's spelled with an S. At least at Cyber Math. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. First of all, you're probably thinking, why can't I just LN both sides? Let's do it. That's going to be fun. So if we LN this and LN1, LN1 is zero, right? Well, at least in the real world. Okay, let's pretend we don't know. So now we're going to go ahead and move the z. z times something is 0, so z has to be 0, right? I mean, what else can it be? Of course, you don't need to know ln something something. But that's not the full story. Yes, you probably knew z equals 0 works because any number, including 0 to the power 0 equals 1. I know some people are going to object like, no, 0 to the power 0 is undetermined, indeterminate, whatever, undetermined. No, it is 1. Trust me, it's been proven there are three ways to prove it, and I made a video. Go ahead and check it out, if I don't forget to include it, hopefully not. It's also in the description down below. Check it out and let me know what you think, because 0 to the power 0, again, is 1. Anyways, so now we're going to go ahead and look at it from a more rigorous angle, more rigorous perspective, because some people like rigor. How do we do that? Well, we can go ahead and take a look at the following. I can actually do the log but in a nicer or more sophisticated way. Because one can be expressed in a different way in the complex world. In other words, we're complexifying one. Ready? Thanks to Euler, we have the exponential or the polar form. So one can be written as e to the power two pi n i. And it's because in the complex plane, which is called the Argand plane, by the way, we have two coordinates, the imaginary and the real. And real axis, basically like a number line, represents the real numbers. But then imaginary numbers are kind of like rotations. If you rotate a real number by pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees, you get a complex or imaginary number. And you put it together like a vector or a point with two coordinates, then you get a complex number. But 1 is on the real axis. So the angle, the theta, the argument is 0 radians, or 2 pi, or 4 pi, or negative 2 pi, however you look at it. In other words, it is a multiple of 2 pi. So this, are, this is our argument, and any complex number can be written as r e to the i theta. r represents the modulus, but modulus is 1 for 1, because it's 1. So we end up with e to the i theta, which is that. Make sense? Now, we're going to natural log both sides, and when we do, we're going to get something much more interesting than 0. Look at this. We're going to have this, and it's going to be 2 pi and i. Beautiful. And then we can use division, right? z equals 2 pi and i divided by ln something something. But what is the ln of a complex number? That's something we need to talk about. It's easy. If you are lning a plus b i, it is at least the principal value of the complex logarithm, because it's multi-valued, is ln absolute value of a plus b i plus i times the argument of a plus b i. Now, what is the absolute value of a plus b i? 
is the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is also, you know, the modulus. An argument it can be expressed in terms of arctangent, but it really depends on the quadrant where a plus bi is, so I'm just going to write it like that. So we do need the absolute value and the angle, but that's very easy to do for this number. Because if you think about it, this is 1 half plus root 3 over 2i, and in the complex plane, it kind of looks like this, sort of, and the angle it makes is 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians, and its modulus is 1. Okay, you got that, right, from Pythagorean theorem. So our number can be written as 1 times e to the power i pi over 3, which is e to the power i pi over 3. So now we can go ahead and replace it with that, but when you ln it, it's ln 1 is going to be 0, that's a real value to ln, and this is going to be pi over 3, so now our expression is going to be 2 pi ni divided by, ready, i pi over 3, because we are ln this, remember? So when you ln this, you're going to get i pi over 3. So we're going to replace this with i pi over 3, and this simplifies a great deal. Take a look. We can cancel out the pi and the i. We end up with 2 n divided by 1 third, make no mistake, and that is going to be 6 n. But what is that supposed to mean? n is an integer, don't forget that. So any integer that is a multiple of 6, including 0, is a solution. At least it seems like that, right? So now, let's go ahead and take a look at a different approach, because I like multiple approaches. With the second method, we're going to go ahead and look at it from a different angle. By the way, you could find that the argument is pi over 3 just by looking at the tangent, which is b over a, but that's just a different way to look at it. So now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this number in polar form. This is e to the power i pi over 3, and then to the power z equals e to the power 2 pi and i. So we can do it directly, right, without going through all this ln stuff. And now we notice that i pi over 3 multiplied by z is 2 pi and i. Again, i pi cancel out, and we end up with z equals 6n, where n is an integer. So if n is 0, z equals 0 is a solution. If n is 1, z equals 1 is a solution. There's actually a third way to do it too, but that's kind of like super duper uh, complicated or maybe complex, you can try until you get one. So take this number, and I don't know how which form you want to use, doesn't matter, but square it. When you square it, you're going to get something like 1 minus 3 plus 2 root 3i divided by 4. That's going to be like negative 2 plus 2 root 3i over 4, and that is equal to negative 1 plus root 3i over 2. Sorry, uh, sometimes the pen or whatever uh, is just going to just the pen is going to go crazy, I think. This is z something squared, right? The number we're looking for. So 2 didn't work because that can, it, getting, it didn't give us 1. You can square this number one more time to get the fourth power, but you, you'll soon realize that it's not actually going to give us, it's not actually going to give us 1. But one thing to keep in mind is when you square it, you kind of got the opposite of the conjugate. Does that make sense? So I kind of take a complex number w, I square it, I take the opposite of the conjugate. Maybe you can multiply both sides by w. That gives you w cubed equals negative w times w con, uh, bar, whatever. <laughs> and then from here, hopefully, you can arrive at something more meaningful. You know what that's going to give you? This is going to give you the absolute value of w squared, but you already know it's 1, so this is going to give you a negative 1. Uh-oh, that's kind of nice. I know that w cubed is negative 1, so if I square both sides, that's going to give me a positive 1, and that's what I'm looking for. And this is the lowest power that works. You know that 6 works. But if 6 works, multiples of 6 also works, because if you just raise it to any integer power, as you know, 1 to the power n is equal to 1. So yes, we get the same answer. It's just a little bit more painful. Or if you just tried to cube it, you would get negative 1, and then you could also go from there. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.